Normally there's a countdown, I just said there's no countdown. So welcome to Gorse Hill Baptist Church on Sunday, the 3rd of April, 2022. It's great to see you all here. For our service this morning, we're staying all together. So there's lots of different things going on in the service. There's different people involved. And if the children want to do some, some kind of work during the service, there's a couple of word searches at the front and there's a picture search as well. Now our theme this morning is around the idea of journeys. Can anyone tell me what a journey is? Yes. When you go somewhere, have you been somewhere this morning? Uh, have you travelled this morning? Yes, you have, haven't you? You've come from home to here. So a journey is where you travel. And in this time of the church year, we often think about Jesus and his journeys. And he travelled from his home in Nazareth and he went through all of Galilee and he went to Jerusalem. But there's another journey that Jesus did as well because he went to the cross. He went on a physical journey, which is from town to town, but he also went on a spiritual journey, which was to go um, through his life to die for our sins and to rise again, which we'll celebrate at Easter. So we're thinking about travelling and journeys and how we can be part of that. Now, some of you have got some letters there. If you've got a letter, can you hold it up? OK, put it down again quickly. <laughs> You'll need it a bit later. There's, there's a reason for that. We're going to have some songs, and the songs have all got actions. So join us with the actions. If the children want to do some word searches and some, uh, and some picture searches around the theme of journeys, there's two different ones here, uh, two different word searches, and a picture one as well. So if you find the words a bit tricky, get someone to help you or do the picture one. The picture one I find easiest, actually. It's nice and easy, that one. But we're here to worship God. And so we're going to do that and we're going to sing a couple of songs and they've got action. So my light heist and then I'm going to jump up and down. So real enthusiasm, real joy about coming to worship God today. Let's stand if we're able and we'll sing together.
to get safe to shore and when the bible talks about salvation it means being safe and god making us safe so when jesus come he came as we'll hear in our bible reading this morning to make us safe to show us the way to god to be safe in god's shore so our next song is a really enthusiastic one that says we're going to praise god and we're going to jump up and down so you're welcome to it. The floor is quite strong. So at home, we expect to see you doing it. I can't see you on Facebook now, but we'll look at you later. I'm going to jump up and down. I'm going to spin right round. sit down that was brilliant well done I'll have to check on Facebook to see how you guys were doing later on okay I've given some of you some letters so actually I'll need Emily's help Emily could you come with me just for a moment now Emily's very keen on maths aren't you Emily so I'll tell you what to do in just a moment but if you wait here just a moment okay let's just have a dry run if you've got your letter and I say it Hold it up in the air. Or stand up with it if you can. We begin with Z. V. Who's got V? Who's got R? Who's got F? Who's got B? Oh, OK. OK. We're going to have to speed up a bit. OK. Who's got M? Who's got O? Who's got P? Fantastic. OK. I'm going to make it slightly easy for you. 
I'm going to go alphabetically, but I'm going to go real fast, OK? Let's have a trial run. A, B, C, D. Fantastic. Oh, he, he, he was waiting for it, nearly. Wait for it, wait for it. Well done. You, you were nearly there. OK, let's go for the whole alphabet. Are you ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, Z. Well done. If you've got a letter, can you just hold it up in the air a moment? Emily, can you count how many letters there are? How many letters are there? Twenty-two. Ah, there should be twenty-four. Oh, those two over there, that's it. Hold them up high so Emily can count them. Don't hide them. <laughs> 24. How many letters are there in the alphabet? 26. What letters are missing? Anyone know? You. Celia. You. you. Would you like to come to the front, Celia? <laughs> <laughs> Which other letter is missing? Oh, the young lady here at the front, actually. Come on, Sarah. Come up. Jess, sorry. <laughs> So, we've got two letters. Thank you very much, Emily. That was your counting from me this morning. We've got two letters missing. Oh, so the whole alphabet is 26 letters, isn't it? At least in English, anyway. And I know other languages have got way more letters or way less. So, we've got all these letters that make up the alphabet, but there were two missing. And those two ones are quite important ones in, in terms of their faith. You and I. And I want to put a Bible verse up on the screen, which I think will come up now behind me. Can someone stick me my slide up, Sue? All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a living part of it. And that comes from the New Living Translation. And if you look at the picture on the side there, it's got church in the middle, it's got Jesus Christ at the top, and it's got lots of little figures which means the body of Jesus, the body of Christ, the church, is made up of you and I. And that's very, very important to remember, isn't it? That the church is only made complete because of you and me, you and I. So you can have all these letters, but if these two vital ones are missing, it doesn't make up the alphabet. And they're particularly important because they're both a particular type of letter. Hands up if you tell me what these two letters are. What's the special word? Yes. Gracie, they're vowels, that's right. They're a very important part of how you make up words. But also you and I are an extremely important, in fact, essential part of how we make up God's church. So it's all about you and I. And you and I are all on this journey of faith, of understanding what God wants us to be and to become as a church. So thank you very much for your help. Thank you, Cedar. And thank you, Jess. Thank you. We've got just a couple of notices this morning. Um, if you haven't already picked up your word search or you, you'd like to do it, have a good crack at it, they're at the front there. It's two different word searches and a picture search. So there could be prizes awarded, not today, but another day. So if you want to take them away and do them sometime, so two different ones and your picture search as well. Next uh, Sunday is Palm Sunday. Colin's leading the service. I'll be um, sharing communion or doing the communion table. But next Sunday, we begin our Easter readings. So you'll find at the back there, there is a leaflet with a reading for each day of Easter week. Um, on Monday to Friday, those readings will be here in church. They will also be posted online on the Gorse Hill Baptist Church webpage and also on my uh, personal webpage as well, Facebook page, that's it. Facebook page, you'll find those postings. But if you want to come, join us here at 7 o'clock, Monday to Friday. We'll have a time of prayer here in church and we'll read through each of the evenings. And uh, in fact, it's Friday morning, not Friday evening. So Friday morning, we'll be here at 10 a.m. and read through till 10.45. So Monday to Thursday, 7 to 7.45. Friday morning, 10 till about 10.45. And we'll do the reading, we'll have some prayers. Um, but also, um, join it if you can't do it. Please join in by doing it at home at any time of the day. They will be posted online. Um, 
Michael's got a special event tomorrow, isn't it, Michael? Yeah. What's happening tomorrow, Michael? It's his birthday. It's his birthday. <laughs> I think we ought to sing happy birthday to Michael. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Michael. Happy birthday to you. Hey. As part of being God's church, we support God's work here and we support God's work across the world. That's why we take up what we call an offering. So we're going to do that now. And the steward's going to, going to bring the bags around. And for the children, there are the, the piggy banks at the front. So if you've got something you want to bring, please put it in the piggy bank there. So we're going to take up our offering now. Thank you. Just to let you know that if you need to make use of the creche for three and under children, that's upstairs, so the creche is available. On Tuesday, Good News for Swindon, which is uh, churches Swindon, meeting in Swindon together at 7.30, uh, and that is at Freshbrook Church. So that's an evening of prayer and celebration, meeting with other Christians across the town. 7.30, Freshbrook on Tuesday. Next Sunday evening is worship time, and Matt's going to be leading it. And hopefully Matt will be able to sing, because unfortunately he's got a tough time with his teeth at the moment. So you can talk to Matt, but he won't answer you back. Well, I think he will. But he'll be okay for next Sunday, I'm sure, in God's blessing. So, so next Sunday night, worship night, where we're all together. I'm going to say thank you for this money that we've given, and then I'm going to hand over to the Corrie family, who are going to lead us in their prayers this morning. So let's pray and give thanks for this money, and, then, and I'll introduce the Corrie family, who will lead us in their, in their more general prayers. Thank you, God, for all the special things you give to us. Thank you that we are part of something special that me, you, you and I, we together form your church. Thank you, God, that we can give something back, singing, praying, listening, but also our money to help others come to know about you. Bless this money and bless us in your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Corrie family, you'd like to join me and to lead us in our prayers? Okay, dear God, we thank you for the gift of another day. We thank you for the changing seasons and how it offers another view of your amazing creation. Whilst the sun is shining today, we recognize that there are many places, many situations that are not as bright and not as calm and peaceful. We pray for the war in Ukraine. We ask that you look after all those being affected by it and that the refugees trying to make their way to safety can reach their destination without harm. We ask that you move in power in that situation, and we recognize that while things may seem impossible, we know that in you, all things are possible. We pray that there may be a breakthrough in the peace talks and the war could end. We also pray for all the other conflicts across the world. We pray that those affected in all those places can know that the world cares and that you care. We ask that you bring an end to all these conflicts. Help those refugee children 
having to flee their homes without any toys or without anything they used to love. Please provide food and water to all young and old who do have to leave their homes. We ask that the, all the wars will eventually stop. People stop dying, homes stop getting destroyed, and kids and adults won't have to leave their homes. Closer to home, we pray for our church. Thank you, God, for the work you have done through Steve and Christine over the past 10 or so years. We thank you for the impact they have had, and we pray that as they move towards a new chapter in their lives, they know that you are with them and that you go before them. We ask that as a church, we can support them in these last few months and that we can look to you for where you want GHBC to move going forwards. Give us the hearts to hear from you. We pray for all those who are suffering or are going through difficult periods at the moment. Those we know who are unwell, facing financial difficulty with the increased cost of living. We particularly pray for Chantal Morris, who is recovering from her recent surgery. We thank you that it was successful, and we ask that she continues to grow in strength. We also lift up Keith and Vanessa, who are friends of Deb's, who have lost everything through a house fire. We ask that in the midst of losing everything, that they, they know you, um, the great provider. Lord, you know all of our needs, both the known and the hidden. We ask that we can all draw close to you and know you in a true and real way in whatever situation we are in. As we approach the Easter season, we pray that we each find the time and space to reflect once again on those hugely significant events and what they mean to us. Help us to not just go through the motions, but instead, remember your amazing gift of love for each and every one of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Noah and Michael, My Micah, that's great, thank you very much. We're now going to sing again, and this kind of picks up the theme of what we've been talking about in our prayers, and just a few moments ago, about you and I. It's being part of the big family of God. And, and this is a song that we know quite well, so again, it's got actions, so please feel free to join in the actions. Uh, <clears throat> stand if you're able, uh, or remain seated if that's what you prefer. So let's now continue to worship God, big family of God.
sit down. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question now, and you can answer by putting your hand up. It's a question of would you like something that I've got in my hand? Who would like, and this is completely, you don't have to do anything for this, it's a complete and total gift for you. Who would like 20p? Oh, I think Talitha's hand went up first. Here you are, Talitha, that's 20p, and it's a real 20p. It's not, what, it's not one out of the toy money box or Monopoly. Okay, you get the idea. Who would like 50p? Oh, oh, close run one. Mark, can, you, can we do this one again? Keep an eye open, Mark. Who would like 50p? Who was first, Mark? Emily. Emily. Okay. And it's a real 50p. Okay, you get the idea now. I might just get, get the next one out. Who would like a pound coin? <laughs> Jess. Okay, you're going to have to come and get this one, Jess. You come up to the front. A pound coin. <laughs> you, you've got to get the pound coin. Is there a pound coin in the jar? Can, can you have a look? Yeah. Do you fancy try getting it out? No. Oh, oh. Who wants to have a go at getting the pound? Kevin looks up for this one. If you can get the pound coin out of the jar, well, there's a few peas in there. I put a bit of my um, dal lentil curry in it last night. There's some washing up liquid. Oh, and a corn on the cob that looks about 15 years old. And. <laughs> It's a, bit, it's a bit chunky. Does it feel slimy? Is there frog spawn eyeballs in there? You, you can put your fingers in. Can you reach it? I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you can't quite reach it, can you? Will that help? Go on, ha have a dive. See if you can get the pound coin out of the bottom. Does it come out? There's definitely one in there. I tell you what, Kevin, as you were brave enough to come and have a go, brilliant, well done, Kevin. What have you got there? Hold it up so everyone can see it. Ke Kevin has left a bit of the juice, a pea, and some stray lentils. So if anyone wants anything, well, I'm not sure what I want to do with it, really. Apart from put it in the bin. So the most valuable thing was at the bottom of the most dirtiest thing, wasn't it? The most valuable thing. It was dead easy to get 20p or 50p, but the pound coin was the real valuable thing, and it was the bottom of all that gunk and guns. And it sort of is a picture of why Jesus went to the cross. All the sin and all the dirtiness and all the rubbish in the world, Jesus does the thing that we consider the most powerful thing that he saves us. He goes to the cross. And it's interesting that Abby quoted that verse from John 3. Uh, and I'm going to ask someone to come and read that verse for me now. Who is Lucy? Lucy's going to come and read a Bible reading for us. And this is all about how Jesus goes through all the difficulty and all the rubbish. And he does it because he thinks we're valuable and loved. John chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes will, will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world but to save the world through him. Thank you, Lucy. That's brilliant. Thank you. Well done. God sent his son into the world to save the world. And it's, like, it's as if Jesus goes through all the mess, all the rubbish, to pick out the really valuable thing, a bit like Kevin was really desperate to get hold of pound coin, he'd go through anything to get the pound coin, and that's what God would do for us. Jesus would go through anything and everything so that we could be saved. And it's a wonderful picture about a journey to Jerusalem. Jesus travels all those miles, it's about 80 miles or so that he walks through the countryside. They didn't have buses, they, they didn't have trains. At best they had a donkey, but probably they walked all the way, apart from that last ride into Jerusalem that we'll hear about next week. But he spent time talking to people. He spent time healing people. He spent time calming the storm. He spent time helping his disciples to understand 
who he was and what he was going to do. And we'll hear a bit more about that in a moment. But just think about it, this Easter time. We're part of God's family. God has sent Jesus into the world. Whatever mess we find ourselves in, whatever mess the world is in, God is still in control. And God wants us to come and have faith and to know Jesus and to know God. And it means dealing with all the wrong things. Sometimes we have to work through the wrong things. Sometimes it's easy. Should we get the 20p or the 50p without any problem? But God cares for us. And Jesus went to the cross because he wanted to go on that journey to save your life and my life. I'm going to ask David Mildenhall to join me here at the front. And David's going to tell us, well, I'll let David t tell us what he's going to tell us. <laughs> I'm not going to give him an idea, but I did ask David to come and talk to us about something that is special in his own life. There you go, David. Morning. Morning, David. Tom. Um, I, d I didn't go to church when I, was, uh, when I was little, when I was your age. We didn't go to church as a... Uh, as a family every week. It wasn't something we, uh, we did. Uh, we'd other, we did other stuff on our Sunday morning, like uh, go to Sainsbury's uh, and do the food shopping and things like that. But uh, I did go to Braden Forest, uh, and we had a head teacher at the time uh, called Mr. Perkins. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Perkins went to church or whether he was a Christian, uh, but one day Mr. Perkins invited uh, some men to our school, to our assembly, uh, to talk to us about some, uh, about some things. Uh, and I can remember it really well. It was, uh, it was Monday morning and it was year 10 assembly and we all kind of like shuffled into the hall like we did uh, every week. And there were, three, um, there were three of the oldest men we'd ever seen in our lives stood uh, at the front with Mr. Perkins. Um, they, were, they were super old um, uh, and they looked really uncool as well, actually. We were like, oh, goodness, what's this? Uh, and Mr. Perkins said, okay, year 10, of these men have come to, to talk to you about some things. Um, and I'll be honest, they, they, said, they said some things that were, uh, that were absolu absolutely uh, ridiculous. Uh, they said things like, uh, you don't have to die. And they said things like, you never need to be alone. And they said things like, you don't ever have to be afraid or anxious. Uh, and they said things like, you never have to be unhappy. They said some pretty outrageous things. Uh, and then, uh, as we shuffled out, uh, they gave everyone a book. Can you, can you imagine that? After saying, you're never going to die. You, you never have to be afraid. You never have to be sad. And then they gave us a book. Um, so I took my book home and uh, I went, got into my bedroom and just threw, that, threw the little book in the corner of my bedroom and, uh, and, and just got on with things. Um, and then a few weeks later, uh, I just picked this little book up and I opened it. Uh, and inside there was a contents page. And it said, uh, if you feel sad or if you're scared or if someone you know has died, or if you need strength, or you need encouragement, or you need to know that you're loved, and then you turned over the little page and it said, or you want to know about prayer, or you want to know about God, or you want to know about angels, and then next to every single one of those things in that list, there was like a little number, and you could turn to the page in this book and read about those things, and I thought, imagine that, imagine having a book that's got the most important things you ever need to know written in it. That'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Does anybody want to guess what that book was? Do you want to guess what the book was? Do you know? Not sure. Tanitha, it was a Bible. Put your hand up if you've got a Bible. <laughs> um, and then I started reading a particular part of that Bible, which is quite interesting what's happened already. Um, I, I started to read John's Gospel. And um, in John's Gospel, uh, I started reading about Jesus. And it was really weird, because as I read, I realized he was the most real, most alive, most incredible person I had ever met. He, in the pages of John's Gospel, he was more real than my mom and my dad and my friends and me. Uh, 
and, and I met him in the pages of, of, that, uh, of that gospel. So I became a Christian uh, at age 15, uh, reading the Bible uh, in my bedroom. And I didn't, didn't realize at the time, but many years later, um, I, I read and then understood uh, John 20, uh, verse 30 and 31. So John 20, verse 30 and 31 um, says, Jesus did many other signs uh, in the presence of the disciples that are not written in this book. But these things have been written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you might have life in his name. Um, and I know I'm only meant to be like doing my testimony, but if I kind of feel like if anyone, if anyone doesn't have that life, or if anyone's like having a wobbly moment right now, or like you're not sure about Christianity, or you're not sure about Jesus, uh, come and find me after the service. We've got a stack of Bibles over there. Uh, I'm sure people can take one away. You could take one away, um, and I'll show you where John's Gospel is. It takes about an hour and a half to read it. Um, but the things in that book are so that we might believe that Jesus uh, is the Christ and that we might have life in his name. Thanks, David. That's, that's a great story. And it's a story of a journey, how David has journeyed into faith and, and how God has led David on from there. And many of us can tell that sort of story of how God has come into our life and changed it. For me, it happened when I was 19. I was a bit older than David. And some very special things have been happening in my life. And I thought my life was all sorted at that point. But God broke into my life. I, I encountered God. I realized that, that I needed God and not just the things that I could do. And it took my life in a very different, well, pretty much the same direction, but with a different perspective on it, a different view of what was happening in my life. And later on, when I felt God calling me into ministry, which is about 25 years ago now, uh, and I was a bit older, so I would have been kind of in my mid-30s at that point, mid-late 30s. Uh, and God was calling me, and the verse that he used was, even as you do it for the least of these, you do it unto me. And it was about a journey of, of looking beyond myself and looking at the world around us. And of course, that's the journey that Jesus took. He did it for the least, which is you and I, the little ones. And throughout Matthew's Gospel, the phrase little ones keeps coming back time and time again. And we're all little ones at some point. We're all sad or vulnerable, but we're all happy or joyful, but we're all in need of Jesus. There isn't anyone who doesn't need Jesus. And many of us have encountered him, met with him, and can tell a story of how he's helped us and guided us. We're going to sing again, because when we, when we have a story of, of our faith with God, we're asked to tell others. And it isn't always easy, it isn't always straightforward. So our next two songs remind us that we've got to be bold and strong, because God's always with us. And secondly, that our God is a great big God. That God isn't small, but he's bigger. So we're going to sing these two songs. And again, uh, they've both got actions. If you want to stand and join us in that, then please do. So we're going to sing, uh, be bold, be strong, and then our God is a great big God.
us and we can take to him all the things that worry us or concern us. Just like David mentioned in the Bible, there's guides and we can bring it in our prayers and in, and in our reading as well. Our God is a great big God. That's great. Please sit down. Now, I'm going to ask Laura to come and join me at the front. And Laura is going to, to come and read from the Bible. And it's from Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13 onwards. Thank you, Laura. When Jesus arrived in the villages of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, What are people saying about who the Son of Man is? They replied, some think he is John the baptizer, some say Elijah, some Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. He pressed them, and how about you? Who do you say I am? You're the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, Simon Peter said. Thank you, Laura, that was great. Even those very tricky words of Caesarea Philippi. So we've been talking about a journey, and Jesus is traveling along with his friends, his disciples, and the word disciple means someone who follows and someone who listens and someone who seeks to learn and to understand. So the disciples were following to learn about Jesus and to learn about what the Bible calls the kingdom of God. That is the place where God reigns, where God looks after everything and everyone. And they're travelling along and everyone is saying different things about Jesus, about who he might be. So who do we think Jesus is? Put your hand up. Tell me, what, who do you think Jesus is? Adults, children, yeah. Sorry? He's a heavenly father, son of a heavenly father, yeah. Talitha. Sorry? Son of God. Adults, you can answer this as well. Who's Jesus? Messiah. The Messiah. And Messiah means, what's the word, what does the word Messiah mean? Savior. The Saviour. The one who makes us safe with God. Yeah, so it's kind of, 
picked out in, in the verses of the Bible that we spoke about. I'm going to talk about them just for a couple of moments now. So if you can, if you can put it forward a bit, Sue, here we go. Who is Jesus? Well, what was happening was they were travelling and Jesus says, well, who do people say I am? And he says, some say Elijah. Yes, the King of Kings. Fantastic. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Listen to the end of Handel's Messiah and you've got that kind of wrapped up in, in, in a kind of celebration as well. as so many worship songs. Celebrate Jesus, King of Kings, Majesty, Son of God living in me. So lots of worship songs recognise him as King of Kings and Lord of all. Uh, and people were saying, well, he's a bit like one of the prophets, one of the messengers of God in the Old Testament. He says, I'm not that. Because people were saying that about him. You know, are, are you Elijah? Or, or are you Jeremiah, one of the prophets? And he says, no, I'm not that. Some were saying, well, he's a bit like John the Baptist, because John the Baptist was a relative of Jesus. It ca he came from Jesus' family. And some think he was his cousin. We don't really know. But he was certainly a relative, because Elizabeth, his mother, was a relative of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And so John was out in the wilderness, uh, and he was preaching about God, and he was telling people to, to turn around and get rid of the mess in their lives. You know, remember the gunk? He said, get rid of all the gunk, find the real value, find God. And John was living by the River Jordan, he was preaching, uh, and he lived off all that were just around him, kind of the land, and he lived off the insects and the animals and the plants. And they said, he's like John. Jesus says, I'm not John. And in the Bible it says that John was only the one who came ahead of Jesus to tell about the, the real Messiah. Jesus is travelling to Jerusalem. He's on his way and he's travelling with a purpose. So when Jess and her dad left home this morning, they were travelling with a purpose. They were travelling on a journey. You started off in Park, didn't you? And you found yourself in Gorse Hill. There was a purpose. You, you were coming to church to join us and celebrate. And we've all done the same thing this morning. We've travelled with purpose. That's what Jesus was doing. Now, he wasn't just going to Jerusalem for a day out. He wasn't just going to Jerusalem because, oh, I've got a few mates there, I'll have a bit of a party. Well, it was Passover, it was a big festival, it was a celebration where they remembered God's blessing upon the nation of Israel. But it wasn't that why he was going. The real reason why he was going is because he knew he had to die. He knew he had to go to Jerusalem to deal with the mess and the muck and the rubbish in their life. Which is why he said to his disciples, who do you say that I am? Because if you read that Bible passage through again, it starts off by people saying, who do the people say that I am? Who does everybody say that I am? And I guess you could ask lots of people around in Gorse Hill, ask lots of people in England and across the world, a lot of them would say Jesus was a good man, that he really did live. But Christians go further than that because they say Jesus is the Son of God, the Saviour, the Messiah, the one whom God sent into the world, not to condemn it, but to save it not to tell us off, but to help us. And so the real answer is, he is the one who has came to save us. And you heard David's story, and the stories of so many people here will be the same. We've recognised who Jesus is. He's the one who helps us, saves us. He's the one who is with us every single day. He's the one to whom we can pray and talk to. Well, they're ever worrying that he's going to say, I ain't interested, because he'll always say, come on, tell me about it. And by telling him about it and by praying and by listening and by reading God's word, it makes life, it makes the difficulties, it makes the good times seem somehow very different. And so when we think about Easter, which we are at the moment, there is a journey to, to, to do, a journey of faith as well as a journey of distance if we travel to Jerusalem. I know some people here have been to Jerusalem. Put your hand up if you've been to Jerusalem. Quite a few people. No, you don't get to Jerusalem just by the underground, do you? You've got to fly, or you've got to sail. It doesn't just happen. It's a journey that you want to make. And so the journey to Easter is a journey that we want to make, that we need to make. A journey to the cross, where our sin and mess is dealt with, but a journey beyond the cross, where our sins have been taken on Jesus, and he's died and rose again. Hallelujah. The tomb is empty. And that's why Easter eggs should always be empty, because there is nothing inside, nothing in the tomb. Jesus is not dead. He's alive. Hallelujah, he's risen. So he's risen to be the Messiah and Saviour for you and I today. So on this Easter journey, let's thank God for all that he gives us. Let's prepare ourselves for a wonderful day of celebration so soon. 
We begin next week as we see Jesus come into Jerusalem. He travels on the donkey. We go through the week as we tell that story together. And we come to that great celebration of that great feast day of Easter. But Jesus, we celebrate that Jesus is alive. He is not dead. He is not here. For alleluia, he is risen. Not has, but is. Still today. Amen. We've got one more song and then we'll close with a final prayer. This song is uh, an older song, but it kind of reminds us of the journey and, and the path that we all take, both in their faith and in life. And it's called One More Step Along the Road I Go. At the end of our service, you can step down the corridor because uh, just a few steps will take you to tea and coffee and chat. And we carry on and we continue in their worship by singing and a final prayer. So please stand if you're able for our final song. the old I travel to the new and with Jesus every day is a new day today is a new day a new opportunity a new opportunity to love others and care for others as Jesus loved for us a new opportunity to look after the little ones within our congregation and further afield a new opportunity to bind up the wounds of the broken to visit the prisoners to clothe the naked to do all those things that Jesus called us to do but it's a new opportunity to renew our trust in Christ our faith in him so Lord, take this day, take all that it is and all that it's been already and make it special to us and make us special to you. And the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us this day and evermore. And all God's people join in to say, Amen. 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 Amen.